Welcome everyone to Magical Me. I'm Jamie Mendez and this is my weekly oracle reading for the collective. This reading is usually done on Moon Day, on Monday, but today is Tuesday. So a little bit of a change in the, um, in the program, if you will. And this reading is going to be for the week of June 27th, 2023. So I'm just going to give it a moment and, um, you know, this is not my usual time to go live. So I'm just going to let people see that I am live and make sure all is well before I actually go into today's messages. And last week, I think it was last week, I did have some technical issues uh, with Facebook uh, to iPad app. So definitely want to make sure that there are no issues before I get into the message again this week. So if you are tuning in at this time, just leave me a comment. Let me know you're here. Let me know that you can hear everything okay. And that'll also allow me to see that there are, you know, that I can actually see comments or not. Because again, sometimes just the way that it is doesn't let me see them. There we go. Someone pop up. Hi, Dawn. <laughs> Thank you for that, sweetheart. That helps me make sure all is well on this end. How's the quality of sound for you? Also, happy Tuesday. <laughs> oh, Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate you. So much love. All right, I'm just going to share this really quickly. Laura, hi, honey. How are you? Thank you for being here as well. I'm just going to share and let everybody know I am live. All right simple enough this time around. Hopefully technology will be nice this time. All right. So how are you all today? How is this magical week playing out for you? It is quite an interesting one as there are some, uh, I would say pretty up and down, uh, cosmic alignments happening. Um, I won't go into much here because like I said, um, that is something that I do specifically in the Oracles of the Light Cosmic Oracle group every month. Um, but it is a bit of an up and down um, week. I'll go ahead and say that. And uh, it's going to be really important to take a step back and really ground your energy and reflect on what is coming up. Planet Neptune, I will just say, is going retrograde. That is something that, you know, obviously, you know, everybody can, uh, you know, have access to that information. Um, Planet Neptune is going retrograde, which is going to change things up a little bit. There's definitely, it's going retrograde in Pisces. So there's a huge watery element at play this week. So yeah, oh Dawn, yeah, it does that really doesn't surprise me at all. Like I said, I feel like we're kind of going to have highs and lows this week where we feel amazing because it's like we're kind of like transitioning between timelines again, um, or at least that's how it feels uh, with a lot of June's energy really beginning to integrate with we've had some crazy massive uh, cosmic stuff happening this month. Um, but it's really all been to facilitate this uh, transcendence, this growth, us to really a catalyst for us to embrace our, um, I guess you could say our higher selves, our higher potentiality, our higher paths. So there's a lot happening next month cosmically as well. That's really going to be big game changing, um, alignments. So if you are interested in learning more about the astrology and how it does influence you, I will say that the cosmic Oracle group, um, I'll be advertising it within the next day or so to join in for the month of July. It's just a month to month private paid membership group um, that I run with my business partner and sister in light, Karen from uh, Oracles of the Light. And we offer daily wisdom, Oracle messages every single day for the group, what we all most need to know, how we can embrace the energy of the day. We also do astrological energy forecasts and we do uh, off, we customize that actually 
according to your own natal chart. You share with us your, your birth information. We generate your natal chart and then we have access to that all month long so that we can see whereabouts in your life or what areas of your chart each cosmic alignment is going to influence and how you can make the boat mess up the best, the most of that energy. We do pull individual Oracle cards as well. Karen's also going to be starting something um, with individual soundscapes for each person with those cosmic alignments, the way that I pull the individual Oracle cards for what each big alignment is bringing into your life that, that, you know, that month or that, um, that cycle. Karen will also be adding to that. So we're going to get some cosmic uh, soundscapes to go along with that, that are custom for everyone. So really fun. It's going to be, uh, again, a, open up probably within a day or so to join. It's $33 for the month. You get all of that all month long for the month of July. Cosmic Oracle. Keep an eye out for that. If you want more information or just want to join, you can also shoot me a message and I'll get you the link to do so. Okay. With that said, welcome everyone. This is my weekly Moon Day Oracle message. Although it is not Moon Day, it is Tuesday or Tears Day. And I'm doing this message to bring forward some insight, some divine wisdom for us all to really see what it is that we almost need to know, how we can best embrace the energy of the week. Uh, and when we have that awareness, it gives us a heads up to what we can do to assist essentially assist us in moving more harmonious with the flow of energy versus kind of being blindly swept around or swept up by it or swept it up in it, if you will. So it just gives us that awareness, that heads up. It's all for, uh, it's a generalized collective reading. I am not doing individual personal readings here for everyone today, though I do offer those. If you're interested in having a personalized private reading with me, you can send me a message and I can get you the information about that. I also offer um, personalized a healing sessions remotely as well as in person. So if you're interested in those, again, you can shoot me a message. Beautiful Julie. Welcome, my dear. Thank you for being here with us. So with that said, um, I have actually decided to, in lieu of all of the watery element that we're going to be connecting with, or will really be at play this week, I've decided to work with the Oracle of Mermaids by Lucy Cavendish. One, because I just, I love this deck. It's probably one of the originals, like the OG Oracle decks that I got way back when Oracle first came out. Um, and also, it's just the energy of the mermaid. Selena Fennec does the artwork. It's just, it's gorgeous. And mermaids bring that element of water to us. They are such bearers and advocates of helping us to reclaim our self-love, to connect with our emotional currents, if you will, to connecting with the undercurrents that uh, run through us, move through us, our unconscious, if you will. And a lot of times our unconscious is playing out in our conscious uh, reality, but we don't realize it. So they also connect with you know, the element of emotions regarding relationships too. So obviously relationship with self and relationship with others. So such a beautiful energy to connect with at this time. Plus it's summer, it's June here in the Northern hemisphere. So, you know, beach bound are many, right? So with that said, uh, first, before we do the reading, let me just make sure I don't have any more announcements. The monthly tarot scopes um, for June are up available on my website. However, I have only done them from the signs of Gemini through Capricorn at this time. Um, I've not seen a huge response with them, so they do take such a lot of time and a lot of work. So I might just put them on pause for a moment if you are interested in your sign and you don't see that up or I haven't done that one yet send me a, uh, a message and I will do that for you or I will go ahead and do it for the month of June and put it or July and put that even up on my uh, on my website for you if you're interested there's also that same uh, from Gemini through Capricorn uh, the June love stories for each zodiac sign so if you're interested again they're available on my website um, this is the last month that I'm offering my six month ahead reading. So if you're interested in that, you can still purchase it on magicalme.com. Um, that is there in my shop. 
also I do still have my Venus in love reading going on which is a very specific relationship reading for this Venus in Leo transit that is very monumental very special for all of us and it will be happening from uh, again from this month through the month of October very special transit so it does greatly impact our love lives as well as our uh, you know relationships with ourselves and our own healing of our own heart. So if interested, again, those are all available on my website. So check them out. You can purchase them. You can always send me a message. Okay. No problem, Dawn. Thank you here. Thank you for being here, sweetheart. I appreciate you. All right. Okay. Did I miss anybody? I don't, don't think I did. If I, if I did, I do apologize. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get into creating sacred space. So with these readings, most of you already know this, but for those of you who don't, these readings align with divine timing. So that means that whenever you are here watching this, whether you're watching this on the replay, if you're watching this weeks or months from now, you're here in exactly divine timing, which means that this message is going to resonate with you most at that time. So, you know, never worry if you're here watching a reading that was weeks ago. Um, again, there's always something you kind of like time does not exist, does it, on the other sides. So with that said, let's go ahead and create sacred space. So I'm just going to ask you all to close your eyes and if you can, safely, you don't have to, um, just take a moment. We're going to just stop and kind of really come into the present moment to detach from everything that is other, everything that is outside of us, outside of this moment that is the eternal now as there is no past and there is no future as they are all different versions of the now so giving us that time to really come into uh, oneness together as we are also sharing energy across space and time right now so if you just want to close your eyes I'm just gonna have you take a nice deep breath in through your nose and release through your mouth And as you release, just feel your body softening, just relaxing, letting go of all stress and all tension in your body. Go ahead, take another deep breath in. And release. Just detaching from all thoughts all worry, all heaviness, and allow your body to just become lighter and lighter, coming into this moment. Take another deep breath in, and release. dropping from your mind now into your heart space, connecting with your own heartbeat, with your feeling, and all that matters is now. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the here and now. All right. So let's go ahead and see what it is that comes forward. I gotta get different headphones. I need wireless ones. Um, we're gonna go ahead and see what comes forward for this week. Again, working with the Oracle of the Mermaids by Lucy Cavendish and just asking what it is that we almost need to know. What comes forward for the highest and greatest good of the collective for the week of June 27th, 2023. Oh, here we go. Ooh, all right, so. It is a number 17, which to me numerically would be an eight. And that vibration of the eight to me speaks to one, the number of infinite being, infinite connection, uh, that just everything, that there is no end, there is no beginning, there is only now, everything is infinite, right? So that in itself helps us to detach from lack consciousness and limitations because we know that if we are infinite and if everything is infinite that there is no such thing as a lack of what are what we 
you know, need within our lives, whether it be, um, you know, monetary, whether it be support, whether it be protection, whether it be love, that all there is, is an endless supply as co-creators in this universe. We continue to create more and more for ourselves with our thoughts, with our words, with our beliefs, right? So eight also translates to the number of strength and courage and reminds us that we have everything within us to successfully transcend any obstacles, any limitations, or any perceived challenges in our paths that we can instead look to the teaching element of scenarios and allows us in that regard to step beyond anything that might be perceived as a limitation when we instead flip it over on its side it is then just another opportunity for us to learn and grow and evolve right it also translates to the number that can be associated with like our career our finances our money and our stability as well so with that said it says farewell to the moon appreciate and enjoy the lunar light and cycles i love this so i feel like we have let me just pull up um, my moon calendar here because I feel like it's speaking to us about one transcending karmic cycles and eight also transcends to karmic debt so there has been a lot coming up this month regarding karma as Saturn um, went retrograde this month and it did so also in the sign of Pisces this week we've got Neptune going retrograde in the sign of Pisces so with it doing so mass you know it's our master teacher it is the Lord of Karma and it helps us to master cycles and scenarios or uh, you know patterns or any experiences that are no longer serving us that we are ready to learn from to grow from with the presence of the full moon in the background it really does speak to finality to completion but heightened empowerment so this week there are probably going to be some revisitations of past cycles now Saturn entered Pisces in March so it's showing us too that there were some experiences and I spoke about this a few weeks ago there were some experiences that had uh, probably been going on in your life during the time of uh, you know around I would say probably around the March equinox and with that it's interesting because there's a we're at 322 here it's a time and that's actually what the spring equinox was <laughs> in the northern hemisphere so not a coincidence right so it's bringing a reminder to us about what we were working on back in March around the spring equinox so again March 21st March 22nd and it's showing that we are ready to actually put like the kind of like the final touches on the tying up the last of those karmic loose ends the red tape if you will and so this month this week with Neptune going retrograde too in Pisces, it is giving us an opportunity to revisit some emotional currents that those past cycles may have, um, you know, we might have been running on around that time. However, this time around, the master teacher, Saturn, is showing us that we are wiser from this experience. We've already walked this cycle. We've already gone through this. And now, if we choose because again free will involved here you can either get swept up in those undercurrents of emotion of unconscious patterning maybe some wounding maybe some fear projecting happening um maybe some again like uh maybe resistance to releasing um but you can also choose to step back reflect acknowledge what is coming forward and not allow yourself to be uh you know, swept away in the emotion of it and instead you can look to it as a wiser version of yourself that you now know from experience what you can do differently how you can take hold of your circumstances and make changes to do things differently to have a different opportunity to have a different experience to have a different outcome and for a lot of us it's going to be about letting go it's going to be about making some sort of release, saying farewell to something, you know, whether it's making your peace with situations, uh, whether it's making peace with th thought forms and limits or fears or the way that you are entering into situa situations and engaging 
in, search, in certain situations, whether it is people, relationships, friendships, whether it's jobs, whatever it is, know that everything, it, it, it's not something that you have to kind of like tear off, if you will. To me, it feels like something that's just being put in front of you that you are probably at the point where you're like, I am seeing the pattern and I am seeing the light. I'm seeing that, you know, things are naturally flowing away versus something that you have to be kind of ripped apart from because I feel like at this point we've been shown and shown and shown what isn't working or what we've completed. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's not working anymore. It's just maybe that we have leveled up. We've grown. We've learned everything we can from particular situations. And it's time for us to acknowledge that our soul needs to grow even further. And in order to do so, we've got to step up into a whole new octave, if you will. We are now throwing the doors open to new unknown, unfamiliar experiences in our lives. So, but for us to tell the universe, I'm ready, I'm open and willing and able to receive what is divinely meant for me now. What my soul is done learning, I will successfully allow it to be closed out, but I will also be then willing and open to allow it to flow like water fluidly into my life. And a way to do that, something that I've actually been working with quite a bit lately, is detachment. And it's not an easy thing whatsoever. It's, you know, definitely one of those things that is so easier said than done. And this is not by any means considered spiritual bypassing. It is instead a way for you to come into the here and now and allow yourself to flow to move and one thing about mermaid energy neptune pisces it is very feminine and i don't mean female i mean feminine in the sense that as beings we possess both the or we embody both the masculine and the feminine as many of you already know but what the feminine rules over is the receptivity it rules over the nurturing it rules the creative the inspirational spark it rules over the ability to connect into the unknown, to be in our feeling, to go into the unconscious, into the depths, to do the necessary work, to go into those feelings, right? But to allow ourselves to receive. So the biggest message I think coming forward with the farewell to the moon card is look how very comfortable in her femininity she is and men and women alike you know fellas if you're watching I'm not telling you to act feminine this has nothing to do with that you know in in, in embracing more of a, a you know gender-based anything it has to do with again connecting into your also divine birthrights of having also the ability to feel of having the ability to receive, of connecting with your intuition. You know, Pisces being that energy of the highest octave of the water signs, um, it is the furthest away from the, uh, I guess you could say Cancer, you know, Cancer being the first, Scorpio being the second, and then you've got Pisces energy, which is, it's like further and further removed. And it's the 12th Zodiac on the wheel. It is the one that embraces more of the spiritual essence as well as the physical part of that. It's the two fish that are the physical, the ego, and the higher, right? So it's embracing more of its divine uh, awareness and consciousness. And it is about us, trans when we reach Pisces on the zodiac wheel it is about our soul transcending from the human ego experience into more of our divine essence it is the ability to feel everything because it isn't armored the way Scorpio and uh, Cancer are with their shells and their external shields they are more open to receiving and experiencing and feeling everything. So men and women, this is important for us all to really connect more with what we're feeling at this time. If you're going to stuff those emotions down like society taught you to do, um, you know, men and women alike, because we were all taught that. It doesn't, you know, but obviously men even more so. Um, but if you're going to stuff those deep emotions down and not deal with them, they're going to deal with you. 
because that's the way that we are moving. We are all being pushed out of our old cycles, our limiting patterns, conditioned beliefs, programming, etc. that is keeping us from our true divine essence. We are trans transcending um, north and south nodes ast astrologically next month. That only happens every 18 months or so. So when we make this leap, we closed out in May, one of the la almost like moving out of the last of that Scorpio Taurus axis from the north and south node, south node being our karmic cycle, what we need to learn and heal and grow and what we need to transcend. Then our north node being our higher destiny, what is meant for our soul, what we're meant to achieve and body, etc. here. So we are getting ready to make a big leap next month with the north and south node changing signs and it will wrap up an 18 month cycle so interestingly we're talking about another scorp another water sign here with scorpio because that was where the last um eclipse was which is again eclipse facilitate that um you know basically like the tower moments the unpredictable changes that need to happen in order to move us out of where we are stagnant and put us into alignment with our soul's growth and what is meant for us. And sometimes, especially if you are, you know, someone who doesn't really pay attention much to astrology or to the energy stuff that's going on, you know, you might not have the awareness of what these alignments, what these cosmos are doing for us. So it, you might resist more so than the, 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 ne the next person. But if you don't deal with the stuff that's happening, again, like I said, it's going to deal with you because it's going to come up no matter what. And it can do so in very difficult, challenging ways. Or you can flow fluidly through it like a mermaid, like fish, like the Pisces that just flow with the current of water. You don't see them fighting against it. Not that we all see mermaids swimming or anything, but you know what I mean? The fish don't swim against the current for the most part. They swim with it. So with that said, we're closing out some cycles this week. There's going to be some emotional, maybe even illusory, fear-based limiting stuff that's coming up. Um, old cycles might be repeating themselves, but they're for closing out. They're for learning, they're for witnessing with compassion, with love. Hold on to that love and compassion and the understanding. Take it as an opportunity to feel into, but then to also integrate the wisdom that it's, that it's been giving you, that it's been showing you, that it's been teaching you, so that you can basically take your you get to pass go card and level up and transcend so that you can open up to what else is trying to flow into your life? Because like I said, as we shift into next month with those changing of the guards, if you will, with the North and South Node, we're going to get a whole new opportunity to step deeper into what is more in alignment for our soul. So beautiful opportunity to, we live and learn, we love and let go and move in divine flow. And at the same time, this could just be removing all limitations to your success. Any limiting beliefs of fear, look at me, 333. So definitely a special message there. Hi, Carmela. Welcome, beautiful. No problem. Replay will be there. You know that. Um, yeah, this is absolutely an opportunity too, I think, for a lot of us to let go of preconceived expectations limiting like limiting beliefs that we've um created for ourselves where we've you know it's almost like what i'm seeing is we're being guided to take off the armor and flow without it and that means detaching and detaching from outcomes trusting that everything is always in divine accordance and when you allow for divine alignment to happen and you move with the flow versus hold on tightly to what's being transformed or being changed or being released from your life, you block up your pathway to um, what's trying to happen for you and in all actuality make this, the situation so much more painful. When is if we just surrender and let go with that trust in 
that everything is infinite. There is no such thing as lack. We are always supported and being guided divinely when we move in flow with what is happening and we just trust in that. So detaching from the fear, the control, from the unknown, from the uh, you know limiting thoughts, allow yourself to be moved and watch what then awaits for you because this is such a beautiful time of brand new journeys presenting themselves where our our human experience can really leap up higher into our soul's journey can really be much it's almost like starting from that reset point where we don't have to keep experiencing the old cycles that were created for us through patterning, through wounding, through um, programming and ancestral even. We can now experience these things that our soul was always meant to do. Why we came here. If we just let go and let flow. All right. All right, my beautiful friends. Thank you all so much for being here with me. And for those of you who are watching on the replay, please don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Even share it if you choose. And I appreciate you all being here. And if you have any questions about the offerings that are available this time, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Have a blessed and magical week. And do your best to also stay grounded. Okay? Take care of you.